welcome back to another episode of Parent Quick Smarts for 5th grade. In this session, we will be covering Unit 2, Division of Whole Numbers. Most of us remember how we were taught to divide in school. Usually this involved repeated practice and rote memorization of the long division algorithm. Divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. Sound familiar? And of course, lots of repeated practice worksheets. Our students will be learning to use long division. However, we are going to ask them to investigate how and why the long division, long division works in order to build a deeper understanding of the process. Students will be exposed to the standard algorithm only after they have a conceptual understanding of how it works and what the numbers mean. The first thing that students will explore is how to use different strategies to estimate a reasonable answer to a division problem. Next, they will investigate using manipulatives to model a division scenario. And finally, they will be able to relate those models to the long division algorithm. As we said in our last episode, any good lesson usually begins with a challenging real world problem. Your student may be asked to solve a problem similar to this. Students would first be asked to use and explain a strategy for estimation in order to determine a reasonable benchmark that they can compare their solution to. For example, they could round 124 to 100, which would easily divide by 4 to give them an estimate of 25. Or, they could realize that 124 has 12 tens, which is compatible with 4, and divide 120 or 12 tens by 4, which would give them 3 tens or 30 as an estimate. Remember, the purpose of an estimate is to quickly get a ballpark figure for their solution in order to check its reasonability. Students would then be asked to use a manipulative such as base 10 blocks to model what is happening in the problem. For example, by representing 124 apples with one flat for the hundreds, two rods for the tens, and four unit cubes for the ones, and then using four groups to represent the Girl Scouts, they could easily model the division process. First looking at the hundreds, you can't split one hundred into four groups, so they would have to regroup that hundred as ten ten rods or ten tens. They now have a total of twelve ten rods or twelve tens which can easily be split into four groups with three ten rods or three tens in each group. They now can split the unit cubes four, one for each group, and they would get 31 apples in each group. Once they have been able to model the division process using manipulatives, students should be able to compare this model to using quick picks and explain how the two are similar. The concrete model may be easier to manipulate when investigating and explaining what is happening with others in a group. However, the quick pick can be used even when manipulatives are not available and offers more opportunities for labeling the steps that one took to a solution. Once the student is able to split a dividend into equal groups of the divisor using either manipulatives or a quick pick model, we want them to relate these models back to the long division algorithm. For example, when dividing 124 into groups of four, we first look at the hundreds. We can't split 100 into four equal groups, so we would have to regroup that 100 as 10 tens. 10 tens added to the two tens we originally had would give us a total of 12 tens, which can be split into four equal groups with three tens in each group. Four groups of three tens would give us 12 tens, and we would have no tens left over. Next, we would move to the ones. And four ones can be split equally into four groups with one in each group, which would give us no ones left over and a total of 31 in each equal group. Students will be exposed to problem solving situations that require them to understand what the numbers mean in order to, carry, to correctly answer the question. 
Being able to label the numbers in their work is important in order for the students to show comprehension of the problem scenario. For example, in the problem shown, labeling their values in their work and understanding that the remainder shows a fraction of the next whole group will help students to correctly answer the problem as seven and one-fourths of an ounce in each bag, as opposed to incorrectly answering seven remainder three, which does not make sense in the context of this question. Some real-world examples of division that you and your student could explore include scaling ingredients in cooking. You could look at a recipe that serves several people with your child and talk about how to divide the amount of each individual ingredient used to make enough for less servings. Ever gone to Busch Gardens or Disney and had to stand in lines? Count the number of people in line with your child and the number that fits in each ride and find out how many times the ride will have to run before it's your turn. Do you sew? Let your child help you with a sewing project. Have them determine the number of equal size patterns that can be cut from a piece of fabric. Ask them what the remainder would tell you. Here are some examples of problems that your student may be asked to solve as they progress through this unit in their GoMath text. Some questions you may want to ask your child to help build their understanding are, why is estimation important when dividing? How does your model relate to the standard long division algorithm? How does place value connect to your strategy? What is the importance of the remainder in this problem? Thank you for joining us today on Parent Quick Smarts. Remember, the best way to support your child's education is to keep in communication with your child's teacher. Till next time, look at these websites, thinkcentral.com, elementarymath.com, dot mysdhc.org. See you next episode.